What you're about to see is a full-length sample tutorial from my new online course, Synthesis 101. In this program, you'll learn synthesizers inside and out, so you can make your own signature sounds and stop relying on presets. Also, as a huge thank you for watching my videos, I have a massive free giveaway for you guys. You can get this Ableton template complete with all the synth patches and samples by simply clicking the link below and downloading it from my site. So let's get into this patch. We'll first listen to it on solo so you can hear it on its own. So let's rebuild that patch from the ground up using the same MIDI clip. We'll start with an instance of Ableton's analog synth, which is great for bass lines. And in the global shell, we're going to select the quick routing that routes both of the oscillators through filter 1 and amp 1. We'll set oscillator 1 to be a sawtooth wave. And we're going to pitch it down by an octave to get it into the bass range. Oscillator 2 will set to be a square wave and pitch it down as well. Now for basses, I really like to use a combination of square waves and sawtooth waves because sawtooths are very sharp and abrasive. Squares are a little bit more warm and I find they have a bit more body. So using them in combination with each other usually produces a really nice fat sounding result. Next, we're going to thicken up the sound by using a little bit of detuning. We're going to detune oscillator 1 up by a few cents and oscillator 2 down by a few cents. We can also try out unison. See how that works here too. When I'm adding unison to a patch, it increases the volume of the output of the synth. So I usually will take the master volume and bring that down a little bit just to keep the volume tame enough. Now we're going to add some movement to our sound using a filter. Over in the filter shell for filter one, we have the default low pass 12 filter selected. And we want a sound kind of like this. That nice sweeping filter sound. Our first step will be to set up the filter correctly. We're gonna keep the cutoff nice and low, say around 70 Hertz, and we'll give it a little bit of resonance. But the filter isn't moving. In order to move the filter and give it that nice sweep, we're going to need to assign a modulator, like an envelope or an LFO. In this case, we're going to use Filter 1's built-in envelope, which we can see down here in the display. We're going to increase the attack time so the filter will fade in more slowly, up to about 450 milliseconds. We're going to put it into linear mode. Now we can't hear the modulator working yet because we haven't assigned the amount down here. You can see we have the ability to have the envelope modulate both frequency or resonance of the filter. In this case, we're going to have it move the frequency cutoff. So we're going to use this parameter right here. Increasing it will allow us to hear the envelope operating on the filter. That sounds good. Now what I'm going to do is increase the sustain level. So when the filter opens, it'll stay open as long as we hold the MIDI note. So let's unsolo the track now and listen to this patch in the mix for a sec. It's sounding good, but it's definitely going to need some effects to beef it up before we're finished with it. The first effect we're going to start with is one of my favorites in Ableton Live. It comes with Sweet and it's called Amp. Amp is a beast of a distortion plugin. It's very simple to use, and one of the favorite settings I have on here is the bass setting. Check it out. Already that's making our bass a lot fatter. One thing I'm going to do with it is knock a little bit of the mid out of it and reduce the presence just slightly. There we go. Next in our chain, we're going to add some compression to fatten things up. We're going to start with the makeup gain off, and we'll put the compressor into opto mode. 
Opto simulates an optical compressor, which is a slower, a little bit more sluggish compressor, kind of like an LA-2A, and I like that sound on my basses. We're going to increase the attack to, say, 50 milliseconds or so. Back off the release a bit. And we're going to give the ratio a bump up to about 3. Now let's bring the threshold down, get a little bit of gain reduction. We're going to leave the model in FF2 because that tends to leave a bit more of the bass coming through. But we're going to give the compressor a little bit of knee, which is going to start it compressing actually before the sound hits the threshold. Yeah, I like it around there. Next in our chain, we're going to add a limiter to really make this front and center in the mix. We'll push up the gain until we start to see some gain reduction happening here. There's good. And then we'll decrease the track volume here to compensate. It'll just give us a nice fat sound to our bass. As a final step, we're going to give the bass a little bit of acoustic space around it using a reverb. We're going to activate the low cut, leave the high cut active, We'll deactivate spin and chorus. We don't really need those. We're going to increase the cutoff a little bit here for our filter. We'll decrease the size. Doesn't need to be a large room, just a bit of reverb on bass. Decrease the decay time quite a bit. We'll back off the wet dry. Let's see how this sounds. Let's check that in the final mix. All right, so that wraps up our envelope base patch in analog. Remember, you can get this patch and all the other patches included in this template for free by clicking the link below and downloading them from my site. And if you'd like more information on the synthesis and music production courses I offer, there's a link for that too. Thanks for watching. Thank you.